Hello, in this lecture, we will look at into the functions of mitochondria. The most important role of mitochondria in the living cells is the production of ATP, that is the energy currencies, that is mainly through phosphorylation, that is addition of inorganic phosphate to the ADP molecule, that is the one that have been shown there in the inside GIF. Okay. If you look at the inside GIF, you can able to see how a ADP and inorganic phosphates are joined together and converted into ATP with the help of an enzyme called as a ATP synthase. So this GIF is a depiction of the particular enzyme's function. This process takes place through respiration and regulation of the cellular metabolism. This image also shows the same process. Say glucose is entering into the cell. It first goes through the cycle of glycolysis which results in the production of pyruvate molecule. These pyruvate molecules are transferred inside and there happens the TCA cycle or Krebs cycle. The end of this TCA cycle functioning is the production of more amount of reduced equivalence in the form of NADH as well as FADH2. These reduced equivalence are in turn channeled there into the electron transport chain okay, that is present there in the crystal that is membrane foldings which consists of electron transport chain. That functioning, that is electron transport chain functioning may lead to the production of a ATP. So NOF ATP will be produced. This ATP will be used for various other biosynthetic process that have been taking place inside the cell. Now we look at the explanation for the functions of the mitochondria. The first one is as I already told, it's a ATP production. ADP plus inorganic phosphate that is it is phosphorylated to ATP. A dominant role of mitochondria is the production of ATP which is reflected by large number of proteins in the inner membrane for this particular task. Look at the cross section of a cell. It shows the presence of chloroplast, mitochondria, even cell membrane, cell wall are all. Okay. Here if you look at into mitochondria, if you closely examine it and look at very carefully, you can able to see a lot of blue colored structures that have been arranged there in a orange colored crystal structures. Okay. So if you go very deep into that thing, you can able to see the blue colored structures that have been present there. When we examine it carefully, these are the structures that have been present there in the mitochondria. These are all the protein structures that have been housed there in the electron transport chain. Complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4 and finally an ATP synthase pump which helps in the synthesis of ATP. After the protein, the next one is oxidation of major products of glucose, pyruvate and NADH which are all produced there in the cytosol, they are all will be sent there into the mitochondria for further final oxidation there in the electron transport chain. This process of cellular respiration is also technically called as aerobic respiration. The reason is oxygen serves as a terminal electron acceptor there on the respiratory chain and thus it the whole process is depend on the presence of oxygen. The next function of the mitochondria is pyruvate as well as citric acid cycle functioning that is pyruvate oxidation as well as citric acid cycle functioning. Each pyruvate molecule that are produced by the glycolysis process is actively transported across the inner mitochondrial membrane. So that is the one it have been shown here. If you closely look at the pyruvate molecule has been transported inside the mitochondrial membrane there it is oxidized to acetyl-CoA, okay. Where it's oxidized and combined with the coenzyme CoA to form carbon dioxide and acetyl-CoA molecules and reduced equivalents. The acetyl-CoA serve as a primary substrate there for the process of TCA cycle. Next point is that one. See TCA cycle or citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. This is the one which is taking place there in the matrix of the mitochondria. The enzymes of this cycle are all located there in the mitochondrial matrix. So that is the one it is shown here. Okay. 
So all the enzymes that is required for the TCA cycle or citric acid cycle are all located there in the matrix. So these are all the points related to pyruvate oxidation as well as the citric acid cycle functioning. And the last one is something related with the important thing that is the energy carriers. What is happening to the energy carriers that is NADH as well as FADH2 and how the electron transport chain has been organizing that. So these are the things we are going to look at in this slide. The redox energy from NADH and FADH2 is transferred to oxygen. That is finally it will be transferred to the oxygen. In several steps via an electron transport chain. So that is the electron transport chain. So this is the electron transport chain that has been present there in the membrane of the mitochondria. That is in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. These energy rich molecules that are all produced there within the matrix via the citric acid cycle or that may be produced in the cytoplasm by glycolysis are all will be channeled here. So the, if you closely look at the TCA cycle you can able to see a lot of energy rich carrier molecules are formed. As well as the energy rich carrier that is formed by glycolysis is also entering there into the matrix region of the mitochondria. So from there, it will be going there into the electron transport chain. Reducing equivalence from cytoplasm can be imported via antiportal protein. That is a protein that helps in the transport of this NADH molecule. Protein complexes that have been present in the inner membrane, that is NADH dehydrogenase cytochrome BCA complex. They are giving in a short, in a subsequent slide or in a separate video, we will look at what are the components that are present in the electron transport chain. But these are all the important enzyme system or enzyme complexes that perform the transfer and incremental release of the energy and finally the proton pumping. So this is a proton pumping that has been shown there in which ATP will be synthesized. As the proton concentration increases in the intermembrane space, a strong electrochemical gradient is established across the inner membrane. As the proton concentration is increasing, as a result the electrochemical gradient is being established there across the inner membrane. The next point, the proton can return to the matrix. That is, they can again re-enter to the matrix. So, see, they are re-entering there into the matrix. They can return to the matrix through a ATPS complex or ATP synthesis pump. Their potential energy is now used for converting the ADP into ATP. That is, ADP is joining with the inorganic phosphate to form into ATP molecule. This is favored by the ATP synthase enzyme. This process is called as a hemiosmosis and it was first described by Peter Mitchell for which he has been awarded a Nobel Prize in the year 1978. Okay, if you look at this uh, animation also you can able to understand how the process has been taking place. Regarding the electron transport chain, we will be separately seeing a video. So we don't need to bother now about the components or how the electron transport chain is functioning around. So this is the arrangement of the electron transport chain there in the membrane. You can able to see the arrangement there in the bacteria as well as arrangement there in a mitochondrium. We will see the detail of this electron transport chain as a separate video. Next one, we will go into the other function of mitochondria such as a heat production. Under certain conditions, protons can re-enter the mitochondrial matrix without contributing much to the ATP synthesis. This process is known as proton leak or mitochondrial uncoupling and due to this process, a lot of heat will be generated. This process will be facilitated there by diffusions of protons into the matrix. As I already told, a lot of potential unharnessed energy that have been formed due to the proton electrochemical gradient are now getting released as a heat. So this process of heat production in mitochondria is resulted through a separate proton channel facilitating protein called as a thermogenin which is a 33 kilo Dalton protein discovered in the year 1973. Next we look at what are the places in which this protein will be abundantly present. They are found in the brown adipose tissue, brown fat tissue and they are responsible for non-shivering thermogenesis. These proteins 
are playing a major role there in the adipose tissue of the mammalian cells. Especially their levels are very high during the early childhood and in hibernating animals. However, the brown adipose tissue present at the birth time will slowly start decreasing over the age. The last point related to the functioning of mitochondria is storage of calcium ion. That is a transient storage. Something is stored there in the mitochondria and it is released when it required. The concentrations of free calcium in the cell can regulate an array of reactions. Calcium serves as a small messenger there in the cells and it is involved there in the signal transition. Then the mitochondria can transiently store the calcium contributing to the process of cells homeostasis of the calcium. This calcium ion maintenance could be best understandable while you are looking at this diagram. If you look at in this diagram, the cells cytosol found to have very less amount of calcium that is shown in the light green. However, extracellular region are certain organelles that have been present inside the cells such as endoplasmic reticulum as well as mitochondria serve as a transient storehouse for the calcium ions. This calcium are released from this organelle as per the need of the cell. Since calcium serves as a second messenger there in the process of signal transduction in the cell. 